Aluminum is a metal that is very much present in our daily lives. It's uh, present in things like cooking utensils, antacids, some foods, tap water. It is in certain uh, medications and also an adjuvant in many vaccines. So we do get exposed to aluminum almost on a, on a daily basis. And there's always been this argument where the industry, the aluminum industry says, well, you know, in small amounts, it's absolutely fine. Don't worry about your antiperspirant. Don't worry about all those things. Um, but again, many healthcare providers and scientists have said, look, we have certain issues. We find uh, aluminum accumulated in much higher amounts in brains of people that, for example, have Alzheimer's disease. And uh, there's also a, a possible link to breast cancer. And this has been going a bit back and forth. Um, but one thing we can all, ag all agree on that aluminum is not used for any positive biologic function in our bodies. We don't need it. There's no RDA for aluminum, right? We have a certain need for iron, for zinc, you know, all these kind of, uh, these kind of metals we, we need for certain biological functions. They're very important. Aluminum is not one of them. So uh, if we had zero aluminum, it would be better for us. And we can all agree on that in higher amounts, it is acting as a toxin and we can test this in cell culture. It's been tested in rodents. You know, when you give them high amounts of aluminum, they get diseases, you know, uh, they get diseases of the brain. So neurodegenerative diseases, certain cancers and, uh, and uh, autoimmune disorders. So aluminum is a toxin. The question is, again, uh, do we absorb significant amounts through our contact with some of these, um, you know, utilities and some of these medications and foods that we come in contact with every day. So it is the third most abundant element on earth. And um, so aluminum is very much present. We use it uh, and it's a fantastic um, uh, metal. We use it in the airline industry. You know, we use it in cars and motorcycles and whatnot. It's a very light uh, metal. It has very good properties. And that's all fine, you know, we, we, we don't, by using those things, you don't expose yourself to it. What we're talking about here is, you know, ingesting it, so eating it, putting it on your skin or inhaling it in terms of dust. Those are kind of the things that we are somewhat concerned about. Um, we've known it's toxic to mammals for quite some time. And studies have shown that aluminum can accumulate in brain tissue and other organs, so that's, that's been shown. Um, there were studies done even in the 70s um, to show that uh, people that had Alzheimer's when they passed away and they, uh, you know, they dissected their brains, they found that in these senile plaques that build up in Alzheimer's disease, in, uh, there is a much higher amount of aluminum in the brain tissue than in people that you know, did not have this disease. So there was, that's been there. And of course, correlation doesn't equal causation. Everybody can agree on that. And then for a while, this was dismissed and some scientists said, yeah, we don't know. We know it's there, but we don't know if there's a direct link. And um, so when you read some of the um, studies and some people put, put videos out saying, ah, this has been disproven a while ago. But that's not quite correct because as um, you know, recent as 2020, you know, uh, if you go to nature.com, there's actually um, Exley and Clarks and those two authors. They showed actually that um, detailed statistical analysis showed that aluminum was significantly increased in each of these disease groups. And they're talking about Alzheimer's, autism and multiple sclerosis here compared to control tissues. So they actually really went and compared, dissected, you know, uh, people that passed away with uh, familial Alzheimer's disease, with sporadic Alzheimer's disease and with some of these other uh, neurologic issues and compared them to people that passed away with a healthy brain. So, the, and then they looked at really, um, is there a difference in the amount of aluminum contained in the brain tissue? And yes, there was a significant difference. So again, if we would say, well, we don't know if aluminum causes a problem, then we would kind of really have to say that the, the group that does not have any disease might also have some aluminum, uh, or higher levels of aluminum. Everybody's got some, but here they showed that the levels were much higher, right? And I think that's the, really the key difference here. And they showed that very clearly. So I think that this debate is not settled at all. This is probably going to go back and forth a bit. The industry, of course, is a very powerful industry. You know, the aluminum industry, a lot of our products that we use, you know, contain aluminum. And so they are going to argue it's absolutely fine. Don't worry about anything. But we know from other metals in the past that we had issues with it. Think of lead. For a long time, we thought lead was absolutely fine. You know, we used it to seal water pipes. We used it actually in some of the pipes. Lead is part of the uh, uh, iron in the pipes and the old uh, uh, water pipes we had. And we knew then there were issues because people got lead toxicity, right? Uh, lead was in paint and then babies ate paint chips sometimes and they got lead poisoning. So we know, um, we learn these things by exposing ourselves to it and it's not initially. So initially the industry 
has them everywhere. And then all of a sudden, you know, as we find out, uh, you know, that there, that there are issues, it actually then takes some time for the industry to say, well, maybe we don't, won't use this anymore. Asbestos, another thing, everybody thought what's the greatest thing, it's a fire retardant. They put it in ceilings, they put it in ship insulations, you know. And this was a huge mistake we found out later, right? So we do learn about some toxins uh, later on. I did a video about titanium dioxide. It's another thing that we know is not good for us, yet it's present, you know, for certain reasons and certain, um, you know, uh, sort of foods, I would say. Um, so we got to think about, well, just because we're, the science is not 100% settled yet and there's arguments back and forth, this is something that everybody can agree on is a biological toxin. It's not good to have aluminum in your body. And um, as long as this argument goes on, well, how much gets in, I think the best thing that we can do is say, well, how can we avoid it? Because, you know, there's always alternatives. I talked about one of my concerns was the, um, I had an espresso machine and the compartment in those is usually made from a cast aluminum. And so you heat the water in there. And I didn't like that idea. So it's recently switched to a stainless steel coffee maker. And that, you know, I think makes a lot more sense. Um, the, you know, frying pans, there's actually some cooking uh, utensils that are made from aluminum. And I think that should not be used. Now, if you watch some, some videos, people are quick to jump in and say, oh, this is disproven. It's absolutely fine. You can use your beautiful aluminum cooking utensils. I would be cautious because, yeah, if you heat something, there is a much larger amount of that metal getting into the food you're preparing with. And I think that's a mistake. And when we look at the um, antiperspirant industry, if you um, Google studies on aluminum toxicity, you're going to find a lot of studies that show, oh, don't worry about your antiperspirant, the aluminum in there, it, it, nothing will happen to your brain. Again, no one says that by using the antiperspirant, that's the main source of aluminum getting into our bodies. I mean, that's one small source and I would probably eliminate that. I mean, I would not use an antiperspirant that contains um, aluminum. But, um, you know, just saying because we've shown that the antiperspirant itself doesn't cause issues, doesn't mean the other exposures are fine because I think arguably the use of antiperspirant is a very small amount of aluminum we put in our bodies and you're getting a lot more exposure, for example, from your cookware or if it is in your antacids that you're taking and you should read the labels. Many of them really have significant amounts of aluminum in there, right? So there are uh, exposures, I think, that are very, very dangerous and it, you know, an antiperspirant might be, might be fine. But again, it's something that also we can look at critically and say, well, do we really need to use something that contains aluminum? I mean, I think there's other ways um, or other, other ingredients that can be used there, right? So I think that's a very important thing. So the other thing is there is a possible link to breast cancer. And that also was for a while then, you know, they tried to disprove this by saying, well, again, the deodorant won't, won't cause breast cancer. Fine. I mean, you know, I, I believe that probably won't because the amount there is very small. But this does not rule out that aluminum in higher amounts does cause breast cancer. And there are several studies, and I'm linking all of this to this video uh, so you can read it up on this, that show that at least in rodent models or in vitro, that we can see that with increased aluminum exposure, there's an increased risk of carcinogenesis, so of cancer cells forming. So there is actually an effect of aluminum on the tissue to cause uh, an increased risk in these cancers to develop. Um, and again, I would say if possible, I would just avoid um, you know, the exposure to it because we know it doesn't do us any good. There's no biological function of this. Um, and if we can avoid it as best we can, um, I think it's one of the extra toxins that we can decrease in our daily consumption. Um, and, you know, it makes sense to, you know, critically go through our daily exposures and see where we can uh, decrease our exposure to aluminum.